Now, if you recall, there's a chapter which we did in the Hegyoni Alocha called Hesei Hadas Tzfilin. And I want to point out that on page 189, he quotes the Emir Bracha, who's the Talmud of the Brisker of. I actually have, I got access to my copy of the Emir Bracha, and I'd like to go go over that Emir Bracha with you inside. But first, I want to talk to you in general about the Iser Hesek Hadas with regard to Tefillin. So we'll say a few words about this, some of it. We've already seen Omar Rabba Barav Huna. This is the Sech the Shabbos Daf Yud Beis. Chayav Adam Lemashmeish B'Tfilin Kol Shav V'Shav. Kavachor Mitzitz Matzitz She'Ein Bo Ela Zkara Achas Omra Torah Ve'Aya Al Mitzchot Tamid Shelo Yasiach Datomi Menu. So there's an Isra Esek Hadas, and the Torah says that with regard to the to the tzitz, and that means that Shaloya Yasiyat Daito Mimenu, and Tfilin for sure has the same prohibition of Shaloya Yasiyat Daito Mimenu. The Shulchan Paskins this. In Hilchas Tefillin, Siman Chav Ches, Chayav Adam Lemashmesh B'Tefillin B'Chol Shah, Shalom Yasiyah Daito Man. Now we're gonna take a look at a line in the Gemara Brachos Stav Chav Gimel Tan Rabbanu Lo Yachas Adam Tefillin B'Yado V'Yispalim V'Lo Yashdin By Mayim V'Lo Yishan By Him V'Lo Shenas Kevim V'Lo Shenas Aroi. So these are the various isurim that apply when you're wearing tefillin. One is that lo yashtin bahem, lo yishan bahem, and it would seem that the isur of shena is all encompassing because it says lo shenas kevav, lo shenas arod. So if I'm wearing tefillin. According to the Gemara in Brachos Chav Gimel, I'm not allowed to even doze off for a minute. I can't put my head down on the table just to get a, you know, some sort of a uh, power nap, as they call it. However, although that's the impression you get from the Gemara in Brachos, but there's another sugya that says the following. Sukkah daf chavav yoshen other mitfilin shenas aroy avalo shenas kva. It seems that you're allowed to sleep a shenas aroy, whatever that means, but some sort of snap, you know, where you just take a, a very short nap, and you're not allowed to sleep a shenas keva. So we're trying to figure out what this is all about. Are you allowed to sleep a Shana Saroy while you're wearing tefillin? Or are you prohibited even from a Shana Saroy? And you get different impressions from different uh, different sugyas. The Shulchan Aruch again in Hilchus Tefillin Orachaim Simu Mem Dalit Paskins calls Mancha Tfil Berosha Bizro, Osu Lisha Behem Afilu Shena Saroy. So Shulchan Aruch is outspoken, accepting the Gemara in Mesech the Brochus and preferring that Gemara over the Gemara in Sukkah, which says that you're allowed to sleep in Tfil and Shena Saroy. But here the Shulchan Aruch quotes a Rambam. The Rambam. In Perik Dalid Milchus Tfilin Alocha Tesvav, Srich Tfilin Srichin Guf Noki, Shei Zoyer Shalot Peitzim Yimenu Ruach Milamata, Kol Zman Shem Olov, Lefichach Oso Lishon Bem Lo Shenas Keva, Velo Shenas Aroy. So the Rambam prohibits even a short nap, but 
he writes, Ella iminiach aleim sudar. Okay, so this is a little bit complicated here. What, what does the Rama mean? He niach aleim sudar. How is that going to help him? Not too clear. Anyway, he goes on to say the Rambam that in Yoshim Bam Shinas if he has to fall asleep for a few short minutes, what should he do? Is there a solution to the problem? Because we just finished saying in the Rambam, based on the Gemara and Brachos, that you're not let to sleep in Tefillin, even a Shinas Aroi. So the Rambam writes, Kesaru Ose, how can he circumvent this problem? He positions himself in such a way that he's guaranteed that he's only going to sleep a short amount of time. And the Rambam, I think, is now revealing the true colors of the Iser Shena Saroy. Shena Saroy is prohibited, not in and of itself, and it would not constitute in and of itself a Hesech Hadas, but rather we're afraid that if he starts with a Shena Saroy, he's going to fall into a Shena Keva. I'm sure this never happened to you, but very often I go to sleep and I say to myself, you know what? I'm going to wake up in five minutes, ten minutes. And by the time I wake up, it's in the middle of the night. So the Rambam wants to find a way to guarantee that your Shana will only be a Shana Saroy. So therefore, the Rambam says that he puts his head between his knees. And in that way, he won't sleep for a very long time. It's not a position that's conducive to sleep. And now we begin to appreciate the Shulchan Aruch that I quoted earlier. Kolzman shatfilin barosho o bizroo osur lishon bayam afilu shenes haroi ela eminiach aleim sudar Okay, we're not sure what that means, but okay. O meniach rosho ben birkov v'uyoshen so it means that although Shana is prohibited with regard to a man who's wearing tefillin, however, he could grab a little bit of a nap, but the Shulchan Aruch wants to guarantee that that nap won't turn into a Shana's keva. And therefore, based on the Rambam, he requires that you um, put your head between between your knees. Rav, you, you would think maybe they could also say today that you can uh, be in a, a an airplane uh, chair. Uh, you also wouldn't fall asleep for a long period of time if you were in an airplane. I mean, it's so uncomfortable. That's what I'm saying. Uh, okay, never mind. I don't know. I I fly first class, so I don't have that question. All right. So that's that's what we have here in terms of Shana. Now, what about Achila and Shesia in Philin? So in the Sugyan Bracha Sandaf Lamed Hey, the Gemara quotes from Yitzchak, Hanichnas Lesudas Keva. Again, the word Keva keeps popping up here. Again. So he's not taking a snack. He's eating a real Seuda. Cholates Tvila. He's got to take off his Tvila. And Rashi says, Shema Yishtaker, he might get drunk in the Suda. Sounds like France, you know, every 
meal has plenty of wine. I don't know. They don't get drunk, but. So the Shulchan Aruch, again in Orachayim of Chastvil and Simon Mem, Haniknas Lesudas Keva, Cholton, he's got to take off his Tvilin. And then the Shulchan Aruch adds, Ume Nicham ala Shulchan. What does that mean? He's going to wait until after he finishes the Suda, and then he'll put the Tvilin back on. You see, there's a whole different mentality here. You know, you and I wouldn't even dream of taking off that tefillin for a meal, a major meal, putting the tefillin on the table so that what? So that immediately after the meal, we're going to put back the tefillin on our head. But be that as it may, that's the mitzius that the Shulchan Aruch is addressing. And now the question becomes, when he puts on his tefillin again after the Suda, does he make another bracha? Well, what would be your opinion? Well, let's take a vote on it. I don't know if we could do that on, on Zoom. There probably is a way of doing this technologically, but I don't know how to do it. Yes, make a bracha. If you say yes, make a bracha, then raise your hand like this. Well, well are you keeping the tefillin on the table? No, on the table, correct. They're right so, there on the table. So wouldn't you not say it's the same as your talis? You won't have, you You have them in mind? You mean, let's say I go into the bathroom, I take off my towels to go into the bathroom, then I come back and put on the towels again? Well, yeah, as long as you are uh -huh. holding your towels, you don't have to. As long as you have, it's not out of your mind, then you don't again, make a process. Well, why did you, why are you holding your towels? I, I mean, it, if, if, if it, you, you, right, makes you need to put on, make another bracha, correct? Right. With the talus, would it not have the same concept with regards to putting on, making a bracha on your tefillin? So yeah, therefore, if, if no, there I, is, I, I, I just wanted to understand the, the, the scenario that you're describing. I tried to push you against the wall and say the reason why he took off his talus is because he went into the washroom. But, but you're not agreeing with that. You, you have this uh, vision in your mind, which I'm trying to imagine that vision. He takes off his talus and he's holding on to his talus. I, I'm just saying from the concept of Hesach oh, okay. it's purposely saying you're yeah, leaving. Okay. No, again, again, I hear what you're saying over and over again. I'm just asking you, what did you have in mind? just want to know what Joe Zeitman had in mind when he spoke about a guy who took off his towels and he's holding the towels in his hand. Why would a person do that? I, I, that well, that's all I want to know. I'm, I'm asking you a, a child's question. I'm just, curious it, to know why it, you would it, take off your towels and hold, it, them in, and hold them in your hand. It almost fell off, right? It was falling off, and he, oh, and he grabbed you, it. You caught it before it fell off. No, no, no. Then you don't make a bro. There's no question about it. We're talking so, about Chalitza's at Tvilin means he took off his Tvilin. And in exactly. Thomas, he took off his but the, Right, but the and reason that, let's why... Go, let's go back to Joe's case. You took off your talus to go to the bathroom, and you left the talus well, outside. that was Joe's case. I, I tried to push him against the wall. He wouldn't I know, but he, 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 he didn't... Uh, he, you know, I just got off the train Shina, from Tel Aviv. I mean, Bobby is, is telling me that you meant to say he went into his bathroom. So I do that do all do, the time. What do you do when you take off your towels and you go into the bathroom? Do you put on your towels again with a bracha? Absolutely no bracha. not. Absolutely not. But in the case of Tefillin, it's not so clear. But I, I think maybe I, what the I, show... I was going to vote... I was going to vote that you don't make a bracha. I think perhaps if you put it on we have the table. The in the Mechaber that the Mechaber says Umenicham ala shulchan. Good. All right. We're all on the same page. So Umenicham ala shulchan means that there's no there's no need for another bracha. He, he has it right there in front of him. He takes it off just on a temporary basis because he's eating a meal. But what kind of meal is he eating? He's eating an Achilles keva. And that's why he took off his tefillin. And that's the case of the Shulchan Aruch. And then he puts it back on. And he probably doesn't need a bracha because he has it on the Shulchan. But why did he take off his tefillin? 
because he was nichnas lachilas keva. What does that sound like to you? He doesn't have to take off his tefillin if he's only eating an achilas aroi, which is interesting because in the case of Shana, we said that even a Shana Sarai is prohibited in tefillin. But here in Achila, he says, Nichnas Lesudas Kema, Cholates Tefillah, he takes off his tefillin, implying that if he's only having a snack, then he doesn't have to take off his tefillin. But if he takes a little bit of a nap, then he has to take off his tefillin. Why? Because he doesn't have his head between his knees. And therefore, he might come to, to sleep a Shenas Kema. But in the case of Sa'uda, we're not going to be afraid that if he continues to wear his tefillin while he's taking a little nash of an achila saroi, he'll come to eat an achila skeva. And, and Lamad Dovidoma, I was thinking out loud that maybe it's similar to the case of Sukkah, where strictly according to Allah, you're allowed to eat a, a Suda Saroi outside the Sukkah. Again, you could be machmer, but that's the strict halacha. And we're not going to be afraid that once we allow him to eat a sudas aroi, he's going to come to eat a sudas keva. So that, that we don't have. And the Shulchan Aruch says it explicitly. Listen carefully. Hanichnas lesudas keva, chol shulchan. Now he has three words. Adzman abrocha. What does he mean by Adzman Abrocha? He's got the filling on the table. Well, what's Adzman Abrocha? And he was wearing filling. So presumably he made a bracha when he put on his filling. So it's already after this man Abrocha. So what does he mean? I don't know. I can't figure this out. Does it doesn't mean. mean oh, it doesn't mean. Be- One second. One of the few farm that I brought with me. <laughs> It doesn't mean, uh, bracha doesn't mean bracha samazon? It doesn't mean bracha samazon. Okay, good. Very good. Let's see it inside. I just want to, if, if you don't mind, again, I, I know I'm taking your precious time here, but I just want to see if there's anything in the in the Mishnah Bura that's um, Simon Mem. Let me just, let me, let me just, uh, give, give, can, can you give me a minute? Do you mind? Do you, do you mind? What? I, I don't hear you. Okay, I, I didn't hear you. Um, by the time you mind, I already have it open. Ha. Hanifla Sasudas Keva Cholzon says the Mishnah Bura, the Yesh Lachu Shemi Yishtaka Besuda. That's exactly what we saw in Rashi. Mishabu is copying Rashi. Cholton, umenicham ala shulchan. Well, what's going on here? The Mishabu says, menicham ala shulchan, kedeshi yu mizumonim lo, lachzar ulanichan, bishas habrocha. I guess he means Bishas Birkas Amazon, I guess, like you said, Joe. I, he doesn't spell it out. I was hoping he would he would be a little bit more uh, explicit about it. Let me just look at Mr. Burya tests. But he's clearly saying right. that you put on the tefillin before you die, you say Birkas Amazon, right? Mm. That's what he's emphasizing. Why? Why would he do that? Why Dafka? It says ad ad not not till acher until ad acher. I don't know. Why he says would, what would be the ad, behind that? I don't know. So it seems like he's saying that you you have to you should you should put the tefillin on when you're uh, when you're doing bircha, before bircha samas. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what that means. I don't know why that. Because you know you're not you you know you're going one second one second I am the prima godin the lasudas keva kishemisiron 
Oh, look at this. The Wasudas Keva Kishamisiron Sorich Achakas Beshas Levisha Lachsor Levarik. Whoa. I'm just going to underline this because I can't believe what my, what my eyes are seeing over here. The Lesudas Keva, Kishemesiron, Sorech Acherkach Beshas Levisha, Lachzor Ulavare. Oh, listen to what he says here in the Bira Locha. He writes, Kevon de Gozru Chazal, Shelo Yelech the Ace Hasauda Bitfilin, you hear this? Chazal instituted a Xera that you're not allowed to go with Tfilin during the meal. Im Cain. Wow, the mitzvah has been, so to speak, pushed off. So I'm just wondering, what, what would be the din? <laughs> this is amazing. If he, he, he wants to go to sleep, He's got to take off his tefillin because he's not allowed to sleep in tefillin. He puts it on. He's going to have to make a bracha. Why? Because idchei a mitzvah. Idchei a mitzvah. You hear this? Idchei a mitzvah. But that only applies when he's not allowed to wear the tefillin. If he's not allowed to wear the tefillin, idchei a mitzvah, and when he puts them on again, He's going to have to make a new bracha because idchei a mitzvah. Not my chiddush. Here it says in the bir alach. How do you translate idchei a mitzvah? I'm saying that idchei a mitzvah means he's required to remove his tefillin. If he's required according to the din to remove his tefillin, that's called idchei a mitzvah. And therefore, when he puts on his tefillin again, he's going to have to make a bracha, even if the tefillin are sitting there right in front of his nose. Again, you can look it up. You don't have to trust me on this. Okay. So, so I, how are we? So how are we supposed to understand talus? Going back to talus, then we have a requirement to take our five talus. No, as well. no, you're not required. You, you can wear your talus in the washroom. Don't, don't do it, but you're allowed to do it. I'm just telling you, it's not a mitzvah. If you go okay. into the bathroom with tefillin, then when you come out of the bathroom and you put your tefillin on again, according to this Mishnah Brura, you're going to have to make a new bracha because a mitzvah. You're not allowed to wear tefillin in a in a washroom or in a base on So even though you had in mind, listen to me. Joe, Joe, I lost you there. You here in Israel, right? You, you yeah, I'm back in Yerushalayim, yes. Okay, so listen, Joe. If you had in mind to put the tefillin back on, you went yeah. to sleep, or you went to the bathroom, or you ate a suda, you had in mind to put it right back on. There's no Hesek Hadas. I, I have it right in front of me. Let me just finish my meal. Let me just take a little nap. 
I'll be right out of the bathroom. No, it's Ivchei Mitzvah. You have to make another bro. Again, I'm not poskining. This is not a, a, you know, you'll ask your local rabbi. But I'm just saying, this is what it says right now, up to this point. Okay, now there's a whole shnickle Torah here in the Mishnah Brewer, which I don't have I, I don't have prepared now. I can't, I'm not prepared to talk about. He wants to say that some of these dinim only applied then when they wore the film the whole day and they don't apply today. Well, I, I, I'm not ready for that yet. That, that I'm not ready for. And it's interesting that we're saying now that Xeras Chazal that you should not be wearing tefillin when you eat the Achilles Keva, that is considered Idchei HaMitzvah. It's Xeris Chazal. But it doesn't matter. As long as the mitzvah cannot be fulfilled, then you remove the, you've undermined and terminated the original Levisha Satvillin. Of course, it's Idchei HaMitzvah. It doesn't matter whether it's because of this reason, that reason. It could be a Doraisa, it could be a Dorabot, it could be Xera, whatever it is, it's Idchei HaMitzvah. Okay. Now, I had here something. Oh, just one second. Okay, now let's look in the Hegyori al <laughs> on page 189. So he quotes the Amek Bracha in the third paragraph from the top, or the third paragraph up from the bottom, each way. And I'd like to read the Emeka Bracha. From the original. Just to make a note of it, if you're interested, the Emek Bracha has a lot here on fill-in. Quite a few simanim. But we're going to look at Simon Hay, which is on page Chavvav, in case you ever get a hold of the safe. The Indian Hesek Hadas with Philin, Kosava Rosh, the Per Gimel de Brachos, the Chain Kosav Ilkus Philin, Aha de Isa Besuka, what we just saw in the Gemara in Sukkah, the Shain Asaroi. Under certain circumstances, mutavit fillin. Again, we had a stira, but fundamentally, you're allowed to sleep a uh, shenas haroi in tefillin. Again, lamaisa, the Ramam and the Shulchanach require that you guarantee that it won't turn into a shenas keva. But so here's the language of the rush quoted here by the. How could the Gemara in Sukkah permit a Shena Sarai when you're wearing tefillin? And in Shulchan Aruch, let's say you guarantee that it'll only be a Shena Sarai. Hello? Also, let's see if I do me. Ubishashem is not name. Nimtushem is see if I do. You hear the Russian's cash. He's asleep. He's not dreaming about his tefillin. Maybe he is. So there should be an Isra Esek Hadas. How could we allow Shena Saroy with tefillin on? Aren't you violating the Isra Esek Hadas? And, and the mathematical conclusion is that somehow in a Shena Saroy, there's no Hesek Adas. How could that be? He's not aware of his tefillin. And the rush continues. Haya Omer Arav Rabbeinu Yonah. That's kind of rare that the rush quotes Rabbeinu Yonah. And Rabbeinu Yonah mitok divri Rambam. He finds an answer to this problem in the Rambam. Devadei Hesek Adas lo havi. 
Elakisha Omed Bekalus Rosh Ubisko. So if he's eating a Suda, Suda's Keva, there's no problem of Schok and Kalus Rosh necessarily. They're only discussing Torah at the table, right? But there's a problem of Shemi Yishtak. He might get drunk. Once he's drunk, that's called Schok and Kalus Rosh. Hence, we have a problem with the Suda's Keva because there's a lot of intoxicating beverages on the table. Of course, we're not going to allow that in the Kiddush in our shoot. Just kidding. We got a lot of good stuff if you're ever in Ephrat. You know, invite you to the Kiddush. Here. So you have a possibility of intoxication with filling on. That's certainly Pesach Hadas, and therefore the Xero was instituted that for the Sudas Keva, you got to take off your filling. And as we saw in the Mishnevura, that's whole the Idrea Mitzvah. But in the case of Shana, forget about Shema Yishtaker. He's not getting drunk in his sleep. We're not even going to prohibit a Shana Saroy with filling on. But what about the Yisra Hesek Hadas? Says Rabbi Yona, the Iser Hesachadas is only violated with Schok and Kalos Roach. Okay, so now tell me, what's the difference between a Shenas Keva, which is Asur, and a Shenas Aroy, which is Mutter? You're telling me that in a Shenas Aroy, there's no Schok and Kalos Roach. So I'm going to argue. Then even in Shemes Kevin, there's no schok for Kalos Roche. He's got very serious dreams. El Shaomi the Yira, he's in a state of reverence. He's not joking around. Then there's no Hesek Hadas. Afal Pishem is Asik Bitzrocha. You hear this, Rabosai? He's working at his office. I think. Ms. Asik Bitzrocha, you tell me. And ain't Daito Alea Mamish. He's not thinking about his Tfilin. He has a client. And he's dealing with a client. Okay, Joe, the client hasn't paid up for many months. Okay, fine. You'll find a way of solving that problem. But he's thinking about the client. Isn't that true? In almost any dealing, you're thinking about your asakim. Maybe it's high tech. Maybe it's uh, communications. It's, um, you know, you're flying airplanes. You're selling diamonds or hardware. I don't know what you're selling. Ain't there Hesek Hadas? You know, like the, I told you the famous story of Levi Yitzchak with Dichiva. He sees the wagon passes by. He sees a Jew who's lying in the mud fixing a wheel from his uh, agola. And he's wearing tefillin. So Rabbi Levi Yisra turns to Shamayim and he says, even when a Jew is changing a tire and he's down in the mud, he still wears his tefillin. Yeah, that's a perspective of the Berdichev. The Afal Pish is She'osek v'molachto v'yein daito aleim mamish. He's certainly not conscious of his tefillin. E'en ze'esek hadat. V'chein nami misnamne. Meaning a shayna saroy. Ain kan hesik hadas. The ain kan kalus rosh. You can't tell me that when he's taking a nap, he's aware of his thrilling. But he's not in a state 
of Kalis Rosh and Schol. Uh, Bruce, are you there? You are you there? I don't know who's here. I'm here for Great. a few more minutes before I have to leave for Mincha. The Mincha, yeah. All right, I have Mincha one thirty. You you should come here to Dagan. You get it early. Yeah, I know, but I got to open the synagogue. <laughs> All right, you'll give it to somebody else to open the synagogue. But, you don't have to be the week, only one to open the synagogue, Bruce. Yeah, I'll but open next the week, synagogue, but I can't do but, it because I'm doing a Zoom. But show. next week should work out better because... Uh, and push it All right, is, okay. okay. The sun is uh, setting uh, later. Uh, let's not get into Skolk and Kalos Roshi. Frek the Shagas The Ramam says in Perek Tad Milchus Tfilin, Hamitz Tayer, Umishain Daito Mishavis Olov. Potim in Atvilin. The Ramam says that if it's ain't Daitum Yusheves Olav, he's thinking about some sort of big deal that he's about to engage in. Or he's thinking about a, a client. And he's not thinking about his Tvilin. Potim in Atvilin. I don't know, Potter is a very strange language here. I would have anticipated the Ram would say, Osir Bitfilin. Because immediately afterwards, he tells you why he's Potter Minat Tfilin. Shamaniat Tfilin, Osir Lasiat Daito Minat. Now, there's nothing here about Schok and Kalos Roch. We're talking about either a Mitztair or Misha Ain Daito Mishevitz. Not because he's joking around. He's what you call Torun. Fanumit. He's got a problem. There's a problem with work, problem with an exam that he took, a problem with a, a parking ticket that he has to pay. And the Ramam says he should not be wearing tefillin. I don't know, part of it tefillin in any event. Because I mean, yet fill also Maybe now he's not in a state of hesse hadas. He's somehow juggling it all. He's suffering and he's worried and tense, but he's wearing his tefillin. He's aware of his tefillin. But you know what? If you're in that state of ain't died to be love, we're going to exempt you from tefillin. We're not going to take the chance that if you put on tefillin, you'll be mesiat das. They're not joking around to you. They're in a very solemn, serious state. So you see that the Ramam does not identify Hesse Hadas as Chok and Kalus Rosh. The Ramam is here is talking about Hesse Hadas because he's Toru. Because it's ain't died to be Shemes alone. Because he's mitztair. Now comes the Amek Brocha and he says, I'm going to solve this problem. Raised by the, by the Shagasai. Benirol and Yistaiti, the ain't come on us a rush to Dafka Schok for Kals Rosh Asur. So we now have three definitions of Hesech Hadas. Number one, the most extreme Luchumra is if he's not directly thinking about his film. The other extreme says only Schok and Kalos Rosh. Now the Meimek Brach has a middle sheetha. He's not in the state of Europe. He's not in a state of Kalos Rosh. But he's not in a state of Europe. Umisha ain't daito miyusheves alo. Vamitztayer. Gamkein eno omeid bimatzav shal Europe. I'm not exactly sure why. This is a hard piece to understand. 
you know, a person is never, you know, he's suffering. I mean, I don't know why, why can't you say there's year in there? I don't know. I guess he's so involved in his thoughts about the, the suffering or the tension of the, of the possible loss of who knows how much that he can't be in a state of reverence, you know, wait. Again, that, that should bring him to Euro. That's, but, but okay, we're not talking about, you know, the, the, the Tzadik Gomor of, of the Baltanya. You know, we're not, we're not on that Madrega here. Please open the shul. Okay. Ki machmas tsaro v'tirdoso pone levomo mi yiras shamayim. He's not in the state of Europe. Okay, 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 this right now, this is something we have to accept axiomatically. Abol kol ha'umet v'matam shul yira sagi bozeh and that's not hesek hadas v'lo tzarech sh'yeh mamish dait ha'olea He's not thinking about his tefillin, admittedly. He's in the state of Yira. I guess Yira has a Roman. He's afraid of the Almighty. But he's focused on his Yira. He's not in the state of Tzchok and Kalos Rosh. He's not aware directly, acutely of his tefillin. And it's okay. But a person who's mitzayer, or ain't died to be Shemes alone, he's out of the state of Yura, and that's Hesek Hadas. So I'm sorry, is the Rav saying, is it saying that it is a case of Yura when he's with, uh, when he's working? You're saying he still has a case, he's still in a in the sense of Yura? Correct. In he, those situations? He's not, he's not distracted from his Yura. He can somehow juggle everything with Yira, unless he's in a state of Ein Daita Mishavisol. Now we talk about Misnamnim. In Misnamnim, Shapir Mikri Omeid B'Matzav Shal Yira. Uh, again, it's like a Xerahi I, I It's very difficult to define Yira and what removes the state of Yira, but he's saying Misnamnim does not remove the state of Yira. And Misnam, maybe he's still in a, in a state of Europe. But I guess if he falls into a deep sleep, Shainas Keva, that's already out of the range of Europe. Hence it becomes Hesek Adams. And now the Emek Broch asks a cash. So I'm going to ask you to help me figure out his cash. Sarach Iyum, you're right. The Ikar Dino Shal Rambam, Shamitz Tayer, Umisha Ein Daito Mishavis Olav, Potem in Atfilin. And why says the Rambam? Because he's not allowed to be Messiah Das. But let, let's just let it let's just let it sink for a minute. He's with Steyer. Ain't died to be So he's not in the state of Europe. And we can't allow him to wear tefillin because he'll violate the Yisra Hesek If he's not in Yura, it's Hesek 
So I don't understand what bothers him in Bracha. Tzorich Im. And now he has a lot of Shagash. Hare Lichora Hadin Hesek Hadas He Mitzvah Bifnei Atzma Hanomeres Mikava Chomer Mitzitz Vahoyal Mitzvah Tomi She Mitzvah Lola Siyach Daitomi I think he's saying that there's the basic mitzvah of wearing tefillin, and then on top of that, there's another mitzvah of lola siyach daitamin. What does that mean, another mitzvah? We derive from tzitz with the kavachomer that there's a mitzvah to be aware of your tefillin, just like it says by the coin god of Ayal Mitzvah Tomin, meaning he has to constantly be aware of his tefillin. So there are two levels in tefillin. There's the basic level of wearing the tefillin, and then there's a higher level of being connected to the tefillin and not being may see a das from tefillin. The imkain, therefore, in the case of ein daito mi sheves olav, nehi de mitzvah zu yef sholakayim. He's not in the state of yira, so therefore he cannot be makayim. This constant awareness of tefillin Right, the baseline mitzvah tefillin. So I, I don't understand. Is the base is the uh, what's it called? The Yemek Rach is saying that a person who's in a state of tzchok and kalis rosh. Oh, I see. If he's in a state of tzchok and chalus rosh, we're not going to reward him and say you're part of tefillin. Instead, we're going to say to him, "Get serious and be mekayim the mitzvah tefillin." So now we get to the case of ain't daitom yushevus I mean, in this case, he's not in control of his das, so we cannot tell him, you know, change his mindset because whatever is bothering him, if never. You know, some member of the family is not well, Rafmar al So he can't change that mitzvah. It's not like Skok for Kalos Rosh, man. Get serious. Shape up. But now we're going to say the following that if Hesech Hadas is a mitzvah, meaning there's a mitzvah to be aware of my tefillin constantly, like the coin Godel is al mitzvah tamin. He's aware that it's it. So therefore, there's an additional high level kiyum, but the basic level of of, of tefillin he could be makayin. So why do you say he's part of an tefillin? I mean, the cash is beginning to gel in my mind. See, because what are you going to tell me? You're going to tell me that Schok for Kal Shoshi is Chayav in Tzvillin, because he has to overcome. You're going to tell me that Nid Shaddai Tehidim Yishev is Olam, or he's Mitztayar. He's going to be part of it. Why is he part of it? Because he can't control himself. You know, we can't say to him, jump out of that state, shake off that state of Tsar and Ein Daitem Yishev. That will do in the case of Schok for Kal Shosh, but we can't do it here. And then you're going to tell me he's part of Mitzvillin, says the Amek Brach, that's not so. He should be high of Mitzvillin. Meaning, in the baseline, bare bones Mitzvah Mitzvillin, he should be high. Don't tell him not to wear Mitzvillin. He'll wear Mitzvillin even though he's not going to connect consciously to his Mitzvillin because it's ain't died to be Shevesov. Okay, fine. So he forfeits the Mitzvah of Ahoyal Mitzvah Tomit. But still, he has the basic key of the obligation to wear tefillin. Why are you telling me, Raman, that he's part of a tefillin?
Is there a difference, Rav, between nowadays and back then? In other words, Michalis Roche. Maybe, or, Joe, or but you know what? I'm, not, I'm sorry, I apologize. I, I'm just not ready for that, Joe. Right now, sorry. I'm just trying to understand. The, the, there are a number of different levels here, nuances and factors. I'm trying to put them all in perspective. And then you'll ask me about today and yesterday and a year ago. I don't know. Let me just, just, just let me, if you don't, again, I, it's very not nice what I'm doing, but I'm just trying to let, let it settle down in my mind. In the case of Schok for Kalisro, she's obligated to school. That's clear. Now the Ramam says that in the case of Misham, it's tired. The Ain Daitim Yusheva Salvi is Potim in And the Ram invokes the Alocha of Hesech Adas. Comes along the Amek Brok and he says, wait a minute, Hesech Adas is a different level of the mitzvah. It's an additional cue that's derived from the Pasuk, not in Tfilin, but in Tzitz. Because of the Azkaros, you have to be aware of the Azkaros, like the Kohen Gadol is chayav with a mitzvah or raisa to be aware of the tzitz. So that doesn't mean he's part of the basics of tefillin. Yeah, he won't be able to fulfill that mitzvah of Ahoyal mitzvah tamid. But he still is obligated in the mitzvah of tefillin. That's what he's asking. How does the Ram say he's part of So I, I thought that if you'll give me just a minute, Bobby, I, I think there's a number of answers to this question. Perhaps the Ramam holds that there's an Easter of Hesek Hadas. But then you can ask me, so why does it say part of it? Oh, it should be awesome. Okay, fine. That's that's one shlogan. Well, perhaps the rabbi holds that a person is only obligated in tefillin when he can fulfill the maximum of tefillin. And the maximum of tefillin includes the Yisra Esek Hadas of Ayal Mitzvah Tomit. Okay, now the floor is open. You want to tell me what you have to say? Again, I'd like to hear what the Birke, what the Amik Brach has to say, but you're as important as the A. McBrocha. Go ahead, Bobby. I, I, I don't have I don't have a shot to say. So carry on. You don't have an answer? Okay. She says the following. I don't believe that. Bobby's always got something to say. Maybe he's with Tarakas for Shalom or a Daitam Yushevisal. But I'm just asking, is there a difference between now and, and before? And and like, uh, is he talking about Halakha Lamaisa for now as opposed to beforehand? In other words, we, we're, not, we're not on the same Madrega these days. So th things are different. Is that what it is? Could that be well, something? Well, again, he's thinking? trying to understand the Rambam. The Rambam says that Misha died, ain't died to Misha was a part of the because of Esa Gada. So he's saying, what do you mean? He's Chaim in Tfil, and he won't be able to do Chaim the higher level of Tzitz. Okay, but that doesn't mean he's part of the Tfilin. He's not willing to say that there's an Easter Hesek Hadas, and therefore he's part of the Tfilin. He's not willing to say that the Hoyal Mitzchot Tomit of Tzitz is part and parcel of the basic baseline mitzvah of Tzvillin. So what's his answer? Avenu Simcha Beshita Mugubetz as Menachas Daf Lamid Vav Kosav Dehad the Mutalikros Shma Ulis Pal Bitzvillin Wow. I mean, that's a whole subject into itself. I know that David already sent out those pages, but we'll probably get to that next week. 
I mean, that's that's against everything we've been saying now, because we said Hesed Adas means he's not in the state of Yira, but clearly when he's davening and he's reciting creeds when he's in the state of Yira, the assumption here on the premise of the Rabbeinu Simcha is that you have to be constantly aware of your tefillin. If you're reciting, you know, La Malshina Malsi Sikva, because somebody's being Malshin on you, then you're not thinking about tefillin. So that's the kasha of Rabbeinu Simcha. Let's see what he answers. Ah, I'll got the Ali days that we see at the Asmik Tfilin, who we should be osek be mitzvah, potem in a mitzvah. Niftar b'shas kriyach mal tfilah me a mitzvah, shal hesek hadas. So he proves from Rabbi Simcha that the kiyum of, of being aware of the tefillin is a separate kiyum on top. It's a cherry on top. And it doesn't undermine the basic mitzvah. Therefore, even though he's not being the time of the mitzvah of when he's davening or he's reciting Kriyachma, but nevertheless, Rabbeinu Simcha says that we don't have to worry about that. He's Chayv and Tfilin, and we're going to potter him up from that extra level cube of Ahoyal Mitzvah Tomei. I don't know what, uh, what that's all about. I don't know. We're being invaded here. I don't know. Where? Okay. We'll, we'll just finish it up here because I see. I don't know if Yudi's around. I don't know if David's around. Certainly, uh, Bobby's not around. And now. Bruce is not everybody's dropping out on me. Okay, fine. You think I'm insulted? Just devastated. But anyway. I'm still here. Oh, David's still here. Good. I'm glad I'd love to see David with that background. It's like, you know, he looks like the king of the universe. You know what I mean? Oh, that one, yeah. <laughs> I like it. All right. He says the following: Miguf haMitzvah shall fill in lo niftar. He's still chayiv in tefillin, even though he's not being mekayim that higher level of awareness of the tefillin, because he's concentrating on his tefillos, on his tachlunim, on his kabbal sol malchus shemayim of kriyachma. He's not thinking about his tefillin, but he forces that mitzvah tefillin. Which is derived from sits, but he still is kind of in the basic bits of tefillin. Why does the Raman say that a mitzvah? The ain't died to be shevis all of his part of the tefillin. It's sorry. Okay, then, Rabosai, this is where we're going to stop. And I want to just before you go,